Good morning, Pirates. I uh, am Sefi, and I'm gonna show you today how I use a projector to speed up my production time on uh, custom clothes. So I have an Etsy shop, and um, I make custom clothes um, by custom order. So they can pick whatever they want, and then they can pick the fabric, and I'll make them whatever they want. Um, predominantly, I do women's clothes and children's clothes. I do a lot of grow with me, however, uh, probably 95% of what I do and sell is Pattern for Pirates or Made for Mermaids. So I want to show you today how my setup and what works for me. Um, there's other women that have different setups, but this one to me just made it more sense. And um, I don't have to mess with it. It's there when I need it. When I don't, I don't have to do anything. Um, yes. And uh, I am wearing an oversized sweater today. And my peg legs. <laughs> it's like 98% of my wardrobe right now because I just got over spinal fusion surgery. So I'm uh, seven weeks out. So I don't get to sew as much as I want to, but uh, hopefully that'll change soon. So I do have this custom order to get out and I wanted to show you guys what I'm going to do. So bear with me um, as I attempt to show you what's going on here. So you'll see, uh, this is my cutting surface. My husband made this for me. Um, it, all it is is Ikea cubes. I don't know if you can see them. There's one here and there's one here as my legs. He custom cut um, a really uh, a piece of hardwood, uh, four by eight, and then he trimmed it down to fit so my drawer doesn't hit it. And then um, I just have this ginormous 36 inch by 24 inch cutting mat, double sided. So um, really like that and I can move it around. However, if I run out of space, um, because this table is the way it is, I can actually cut on it, but I try not to because it dulls my blades really fast. So um, I just shift the cutting mat around. However, with a projector, you don't have to do that anymore because you can just project it down, shift it around as you need to, and then just keep cutting. It's really nice. Uh, because I do a lot of custom work, I was wasting so much time printing and cutting patterns. <clears throat> Sorry, it's gonna do a little wavy thing. Um, printing and cutting patterns for each size that I had in custom orders. And uh, I kind of got tired of all the paper sitting around, all the patterns. Um, I converted one of my son's bedrooms. I have two sons that are 19 and they just moved out. So I converted one to my sewing room. Um, and so I don't have a lot of space. So the whole pattern thing was just getting on my nerves. And when I saw that women were using projectors, I did a lot of research and uh, just found a setup that works really well for me and it is a game changer. And I am not gonna lie, don't get the cheapo projectors if you can afford it. Mine was about, I think 250 or $300 worth its weight in gold. I don't have to mess with it. It auto focuses, it is just a dream to work with. Um, I cast from my MacBook, so um, I don't have cords hanging around everywhere. It's just really a dream and I love it. Uh, and the upside is if I want to move to the backyard and watch movies on my fence, I can do that because it's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities. So it's really, really a great thing uh, to invest in. And if you're doing a lot of sewing and a lot of custom orders, um, you definitely want to invest in yourself and get yourself the best materials that you can. So like 300 bucks on Amazon and I'll share some links with you guys. So let me show you my setup. So as you can see up here. That is my projector. You see how tiny it is? It will literally fit in your pocket. And so it's mounted to my ceiling. Uh, there is a power cord that goes behind my TV to a power strip. So it's 100% connected to power all the time. Um, I just ran a uh, power strip cord up there and mounted the power strip to the wall behind the TV. So it is uh, really convenient. All I have to do is climb my butt on top of my table to turn it on. Uh, but it also has a mouse plug-in. So I just put in the USB uh, tab for the mouse and then I can control it from my cutting table. So it's really convenient. I'm not having to climb back and forth up and down. Um, and it has an auto shut off, so I don't have to get up there and turn it off when I'm done. So it just shuts itself off. So let me get this bad boy turned on for you guys and we will start cutting. I'm gonna have to turn all my lights off uh, because I do have a big window in here so it's a little bright so we can see what we're cutting on the table. I'll be right back camera mount kind of sucks I don't do videos that much as you can probably tell but you guys asked for it so I'm making one all right now I have my projector turned on and as you can see it is broadcasting down here to my cutting table um, so you can see here um, let me back up 
I accidentally clicked. This is the home screen. So on your projector, God bless this camera. Make it still as can be. And then we'll talk. Okay. So this is what it's going to broadcast. And then this is going to help you uh, figure out how to get, uh, get your computer to talk to it. Um, on here, you have settings that's going to control your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, um, things like that. That's your settings. This is iOS mirroring. That's for Mac, uh, Apple products. You've got file manager here because you can actually download and store files on your projector. Um, so for future use, if you didn't want to have to hook up your computer every time, you can just come in here and click what you need and be done. I do not utilize that. Um, I have way too many patterns. I probably have a thousand patterns um, that I sew from. Uh, here's an Android mirroring option in case you have an Android user. And then the keystone, this is very important, especially when you're trying to line up your grid lines or your square, uh, your one inch or two inch square to uh, get it in line with what you're using here on your table. Uh, so keystone is very important. Depending on how you mounted your projector, you would not uh, realize the difference that it makes not keeping that projector level is com just completely level with your sewing table. If it is just a little bit off, it's going to skew your pattern one way or the other. And so this keystone option is there to help you with that, uh, skewing there. So you can get it perfectly square on your table. Um, like I said, I use the Ikea tables and then this piece of wood on top, it is perfect. It's completely level. I don't have to worry about it. It doesn't shake. It doesn't move. It is just, I can depend on this table uh, more than I can depend on some people. So always love my table. Now, what we're going to do is, because I told you we have a mouse, so I don't have to keep climbing up on the table when I need to do something. You just plug the little USB uh, thing in to the projector and it will let you control it from there. So easy peasy. I'm gonna go ahead and select iOS mirroring because I run a Mac. And now it's gonna go through the directions, uh, just in case you ever forget. It's going to tell you, um, this is for using your phone up here, the hotspot mode, and then what to do, and then linking to your projector. I use my MacBook, so it's a little similar. You just follow these directions here. So you're gonna go into your computer's Wi-Fi settings, and you're gonna go select, see right here, it says uh, use your phone, connect your phone Wi-Fi to C200JTW2. That is basically my projector name. So I'm gonna go into my Wi-Fi settings and I'm gonna select that. Very important, go into your Wi-Fi settings first. So you're gonna take your computer off your home Wi-Fi network and connect it directly to your projector using Wi-Fi. After that is done, there's no password needed or anything like that, but after that is done, then you're going to go, if you are using a Mac, you're going to go into your AirPlay and again, select the projector name. And it's that easy. So once that all goes through, you are going to see your computer screen on your cutting table. See how easy that was? I don't need my mouse again. So I'm going to put him up in a place that, where I will remember he is. And uh, for today's cutting, I am going to do the rag doll raglan. And um, very important. Um, I'll sit here so I don't have to keep moving my camera. Oh, now you're going to shake. Shit. Just wait. Okay. Uh, so you can no longer use letter patterns when you are using a projector. For a projector, you need the whole piece, like a whole sleeve, all in one. You need the whole body of the shirt. Whatever you're sewing, it all has to be there together. Uh, you cannot piece together a pattern, uh, a, pa a letter pattern using your projector. It would take you way too long and it defeats the purpose. So you have to go in and re-download all your files to either be AO patterns or projector patterns. Um, uh, not a lot of pattern makers are on this projector trend right now, but there are some that are following it. Um, so I'm not going to specifically name them because this is going on the pattern for pirate page, but, uh, just go in and with pattern for pirates and made for mermaids, just use the AO file. Uh, it works perfectly. That's what I do. Um, and so as this trend keeps growing, a lot more pattern makers are going to be doing projector patterns because, 
uh, this trend is not going to go away. Uh, it's going to basically make the letter patterns obsolete, um, which is great because you don't have to store them. Um, you're not having to cut and paste and wait, waste paper for every size that you need. And uh, it's just a really uh, sewing friendly trend. And I love it. And I'm so glad that somebody came up with this. Uh, I can't believe I didn't think of it sooner. However, it's just great. And I love it. And it just speeds up my production uh, probably by 400%. Seriously, I can literally cut and sew a garment probably in 30 minutes now. Um, and that is a huge money maker for me if I can speed that up and not waste my time cutting patterns. So you're going to love this. So, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go in here and get off my table slowly so it doesn't rock my camera again. See, sturdy, dependable, better than some men out there, right? Ladies, I'm going to go in and I'm going to select the ragdoll raglan. Okay. Another thing I need to tell you guys about. Um, when you are projecting, there are two things. Um, so Adobe usually projects white, right? Cause your, most of your files are white with black writing. I find that really difficult to read. Uh, I don't know if it's just my eyes or because the lighting in my office is pretty bright and I can't really darken it here. Um, so what I did is I went into the preferences in Adobe and then I selected the accessibility option and I went and changed the settings for my Adobe to be black with white writing and to me that stands out more on my table when I'm trying to cut. Um, for some women it may not work. White with the black writing may work better. So just play around with that. There are uh, there's four or five options that you can choose from to work for what you need it to do. So don't get frustrated. Um, I will tell you although it does autofocus and it does a really great job because of the light in your room. If it's not completely dark, you're not going to get that crisp writing, but it's okay because you'll still see the pattern lines. Um, there's really no confusion there. It's just the writing tends to get a little hard to read sometimes, uh, but we're not here to read our patterns. We're just here to cut them. So I think it works great. So that is why you're seeing um, my computer screen here is a black background with white writing because that's the setting that I fixed. So I'm going to go in here to the raglan. Um, this is going to be the rag doll raglan. All right. Here's where it gets a little tricky. Um, I have the pattern open. You probably can't see it because it's black with the uh, white writing. However, um, and I hope that they change this, but it's not a big deal. When, <laughs> when you need to do your squares, your test squares to line up your grid work, um, they do not come out in white writing. So I have to go change my uh, settings real quick. And um, just so that we can get the test box and we can make sure that our pattern is the right size for our cutting table. And I will help you with that in a second. Let me get this changed. All right. And now, there we go. <laughs> it's like magic. Okay. So um, here's the next step. I'm sure you can see that uh, my projector screen goes over my uh, cutting mat, but that's okay. Because that's why we uh, have cutting mats that can move. So over here, um, on all patterns, you're going to have your test square, which you're used to seeing when you cut these patterns out. Here's where you do for projectors. So this is a two inch by two inch test square. Um, maybe. There we go. Let me get my ruler out here and uh, stupid Stephanie, what in the world? Hello, my cutting mat has grid marks. So right now uh, with the zoom uh, that my pattern is at, I my test square is really actually running like two and three quarters inches. So I'm gonna go in and adjust the zoom so that we can, hmm, wrong direction stuff. So that we can actually get our test square here to uh, be true to the two inch by two inch. And uh, because it's mirroring, there's a little bit of a lag in there. So just give it some time. All right, let's test it now. 
All right, now it's just a tiny bit, maybe a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm at 35%. So now I'm gonna go to 33%. See if that is any better. All right, I'm just a smidge. So let me try 31%. All right, 31% it is. At 31%, my two by two inch square is exactly two inches by two inches on my cutting table. So that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. Um, and that's going to make these pattern pieces true to size what they're supposed to actually be. So, um, let me go get my fabric and then we'll decide if we're gonna do black background or white background to see these lines and I'll go over the next thing. One sec. Anybody ever just have a problem picking a fabric? I know that that is a problem. But this, let's see. Eh, I don't really like that. Let's do it this way. We will do, <clears throat> I know I said custom order, but I'm gonna try and make this a little easier for you guys so y'all can see a little better. All right, what I have here is a serge fabric. Oh, I love their jersey. It is just the softest. Makes the best shirts. All right, so because I'm using a white fabric, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the white background uh, with the colored lettering. So, now that we have our two inch square set, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna actually select the size that we need because it's, you're familiar, it's gonna project all sizes. Uh, and so to just alleviate the confusion, I'm just gonna go in and select the size that I want. So to do that in Adobe, um, depending on what you're running, just go into Adobe and you can select the layers option and then go in and unselect. So I guess uncheck the boxes for the sizes that you don't need. Today, I'm gonna make a large in this ragdoll raglan. Now you're gonna keep um, the three options at the bottom. This is all sizes guidelines in layer one. That's predominantly your layers, your little notes, things like that. So we're gonna keep that. Um, Adobe's trying to give me some reading errors. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is, here's the front, here's the back, and the sleeve is gonna be on the next page. Um, because my projector runs this way and the sleeve is a little longer, I'm actually gonna rotate the view of this document. All right, so wait for my computer and my monitor, or my sorry, my projector to catch up here. And uh, I don't know why it keeps doing this. All right, there we go. So move my serger over here. All right, so here is um, this is the back of my rag doll. And uh, definitely not making a tunic or a dress today. I am just gonna do a top and I'm not gonna do a banded top. Um, I'm just gonna go with the curved top line. So all I do, you guessed it, is I get my fabric here ready. And uh, we're gonna fold on this line. So I'm just laying all my fabric out. I'm just gonna get it. See how pretty that is? Look, pattern right there. So let me fold it over a little so we can get it right there on that fold and not pull off my table. Come on, fabric, work with me here. All right, let's give it another, maybe an inch or so so that we're not running up on that selvage edge here. Okay, so make sure everything is flat, flat, just like you normally would. Guess what? You don't have to have pattern weights anymore. You don't have to mess around with the paper. I think the worst thing about messing around with the paper is 
all the dust, all the tape you go through. And I was printing all mine on cardstock just so they would last a little longer. There's no way to roll those bad boys up and, uh, and just keep them all nice and neat. So there, right there, I'm sure you can see it, is my pattern projected perfectly on my fabric. So all I have to do now is cut. And like I said, I'm just gonna do the normal top here. No bands, no tunic length. I'm definitely not doing a dress with this bad boy. I am just gonna go here. Um, and I am gonna go with the low back option. So, ta-da, look at that. Done, what was that, like 30 seconds maybe? All right, all right, turn those guys away. I'm gonna put this guy in his ready box. All right, now, we got to do the front. So all we got to do now, scroll. How easy is that? We scroll. There we go. Pattern is on our table, ready to cut. I'm just going to shift my cutting board a little bit just to match what is on my projector. I'm going to cut these little loose ends off here so I don't have to deal with those. Stick that in the scrap pile for later. I'm just going to take my material, fold it back over. I mean, if y'all are anything like me, I'm telling you, probably 80% of my like my custom order time is those is just cutting patterns out. I can sew these bad boys up in five minutes, but you know, it takes me 30 minutes just to get all the pages printed, get all of them taped together, all of them cut. Not to mention, who's got that kind of space? I'd have to go take it over to the island in my kitchen so I could get the space just to tape all the patterns together so I could cut them into smaller pieces, you know what I mean? So this, definitely a uh, time saver. So now again, not going for the banded top, just going for the regular one. So I'm just gonna cut, cut, I don't need weights. My fabric stays in place. Go ahead and cut. And cut. There we go. Whoops. Probably time to change my blade. I did a lot of sewing this weekend. Never changed my blade. All right. So because this is a raglan, I am going to go with a different color for my sleeves, obviously. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and rotate this bad boy because the sleeve is a little wonky. So this is kind of the fun part. It does get a little challenging, but it's pretty easy to do. Uh, let's see, sleeves, sleeves, sleeves. What color sleeves should we put on this shirt? I think I kind of want to stick with that jersey feel. So maybe I'll do these. I got this fabric in a mystery box. I know you probably can't really see me. Ugh, I can show you guys my fabric setup if you want. Uh, it's pretty OCD, but it works. All right, I got this fabric in a mystery box. Isn't that pretty? Um, I think this came from Surge too. So this is a French Terry. It'll be nice. I mean, it doesn't have a ton of stretch, but it'll be good for the sleeves. And I think it'll be really pretty and complimenting. So let's do that. This may have come from So So English, but mm, I don't remember. Those are, like I said, those are my two go-tos. So this sleeve is going to be pretty wide. So make sure you follow. Uh, dang pop-ups over here with Adobe. I don't even know what's up. Um, so, you know, it was the same as your papers. You know, follow the grain line, follow the stretch. So we're stretching this way, our grain line is this way, and so we're just gonna follow that and then just put the fabric up on your table to follow those directions. So I'm just gonna fold this guy in half and put them down here. Now, this one's gonna get a little challenging. See what I mean about uh, seeing your pattern lines? You can see them, but I'll show you a little trick here in a second. 
Let me make sure that we're gonna get the full sleeve on here. Flatten this guy out. Here's a trick. If you're having trouble and you're trying to cut and you can't find your pattern lines, just put a piece of white paper down. <laughs> See, it all kind of pops out when you do that. So if need be, that's what you can do. But my eyes can kind of see it, so we're good. However, for this like kind of instructions, like where you're supposed yeah. to cut things, um, that's nice to have the white piece of paper. So, all right, so I'm gonna start cutting here. My table ends up here, let's see. Maybe we can scroll just a tiny bit. Get him to the edge. Is he on the edge? So, yeah. So there's the edge. And then they'll see where this one goes. Okay, this one, yay! Perfect. Actually, you know, I might. So there's the edge. I'm gonna see if I can move him just a tiny bit more. Well, okay. So, uh, <laughs> silly stuff. That was my projector edge. Okay, so we're gonna do it like this. That'll work. That'll work perfect. So there's that end right on the edge of my table. So let's get to cutting. Um, on this one, I'm gonna do a long, um, a hemmed long sleeve. So let's just get to cutting. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of leave that paper there as my guide. But my eyes can see the line. When you do this enough, you'll be able to do it too. But again, you can always play with the settings to make sure, okay. Uh, you can always play with the settings, and if you want to turn it, like I said, to black background with the green writing or the white writing or whatever works for you, just do it. There's no rules. It's all about what works the best for you, you know? What's going to make your life quicker and easier? I just love this. I mean, this is literally going to be the end of paper patterns, and that's okay. I mean, all these companies out here doing making patterns super easy just to let's see where we're going here just make projector patterns call it a day all right here's the edge here and we're gonna go down to the end all right so Pull that all around. No little stringies. All right. In his box. All right. The only thing we have left to do is the collar. And I don't think that. Yeah. So we don't have a collar pattern piece here, but. We do have the dimensions here. So this is a large, and we're doing the neck band, and that's gonna be 2.75 by 26.75. So let's get that measured out. And I'm gonna cut all this off for the scrap bucket. You guys keep scrap buckets? I have a very overflowing scrap bucket, um, but I also have a three-year-old and she is uh, potty training. So I use a lot of my scraps, a lot of the French Terries, the Cotton Lakers, the jerseys. I make, uh, I probably make 90, 95, 90 to 95% of her clothing. So scraps make great toddler panties, <laughs> if you're wondering. Wondering, wonderful toddler panties, so. I'm gonna line this bad boy up here. Let's see, 26. Let's see. It was, uh, let's see, 26.75. So 26.75 up here. And it was by 2.75. So there's that. We're gonna go. All right. Neckband. Don't worry, 
if you hear chomping in the background, that's just my English pointer that's chomping on a county right now. All right, 2.75. And just to be sure, we're going to flip this over and put it on the 2.75 line. All right, so got us a collar that matches our sleeves. So uh, the body of our shirt will be white and the collars will be this beautiful black lace with turquoise roses. And we are done. So um, we sent 26 minutes uh, is this video. However, a lot of that was me talking and setting this up and showing you how to, uh, the ins and outs, how to measure and test your patterns. Uh, make sure that your patterns are all squared up. The one thing I didn't tell you guys, um, and I probably should have, was with that two and a half inch square, when you're lining it up on your mat, all right, catch up. <laughs> I just moved it on the computer and it's just not catching up yet. Come on. I wanted to show you, when you do it, so our first one was here, and I already know that my... Uh, my projector is calibrated correctly and all that because I spent a lot of time setting it up and I, I do double check it a lot. But I do the two inch square here, but then I also move it and I do it down here. Oh, look, I think it's trying to catch up. <laughs> yep, look at there. It's still not showing. Um, it'll catch up in a second. So I'll just rotate the view or shift it to where the two inch square is down at this bottom. And I will just double check it um, on this side of the table as well, just to make sure that the, there's no wonkiness and that the keystone is uh, set properly and that you don't have to adjust anything with your table or with your projector so that you know when you're cutting your patterns, it's exactly level and the way it should be. So um, I hope that this video was helpful. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, if you need me to show you something else in depth, let me know, but this is the way that I do it and, uh, it really works for me and it speeds things up. You guys saw how fast cutting patterns is now just snap, snap. You can just keep going through all your pattern selections, print, uh, you know, pop up what you need to print, pull your fabrics, cut them, cut them, cut them. Um, y'all saw me, I kept throwing it in here. I use these shoe boxes. I got like, um, I probably have like 50 of these. I got them on Amazon. They're like, I don't know, 10 bucks for 12. This is how I keep my patterns sorted. So when I cut, cause I will spend a whole day just cutting, cutting, cutting. And then I will put all the corresponding pieces, one per uh, box here. And then that way when I'm sewing, I just pull the box, all the pieces are there. So, so, so pull the next box, sew it up. Um, I stick little tickets in here. Uh, if they're custom orders for what customer is for. So um, that's really helpful for me. Oh, here is my, there's my, uh, my material stash. So it's all sorted by a uh, material base. Um, and then I've got my quilting stuff up top. I don't really quilt, but my mama passed away last October. And so I inherited a lot of quilting stuff. So I'm trying to get into it so I can finish some quilts that she left me. But, um, other than that, I've got a pretty crazy room here. Here, I'll give you a little tour. Real quick. A little tour. So, um, like I said, I custom make clothes mainly is what I do. Um, I've got two sergers. I've got an overlock machine. They're all jukies. I've got a faff now. Um, the faff is expression. Um, I've got an embroidery machine. And this is my very messy room right now because, uh, like I said, I worked all weekend doing custom orders. So uh, it's, it's just not too bad, really. There's my pointer chewing on counties. And my Dotson probably hiding in there somewhere. So... This is where I spend a lot of my time on the weekends when I have free time. So, uh, again, if you guys have any questions or need anything, just let me know. I'll be happy to help you. Thanks, guys. Bye.